Hey everybody, so I was woken up last night, I go to bed very early by my wife, letting me know that Mike Bickle was completely out of IHOP, as was Stuart Greaves, the current head of the prayer room. So, God had a little bit of a chance to think about that, thought I would give you my thoughts. Uh, this is a joyful season, I mean that, but let's reframe joy a little bit. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas said that joy was a state of well-being based on reality. So let's look a little bit at reality as it relates to resolving the IHOP crisis. Frankly, I am joyful about these changes. I'm happy that Mike is out altogether. It's a thorny mess. And for him and everyone to be healed, Mike needs to be out of the picture. Thick, solid lines, monitored lines, get Bickle out. Happy about that. Reality. I'm glad Stuart is out. He's a great guy. He's in over his head. He didn't sign up for this. And I dare say he and the leadership team, they are impacted, dare I say, a little infected by the systemic problems at IHOP. I say Stuart Getting out is great for Stuart and gives IHOP a fighting chance for new leadership. I have no idea who this new guy is. I hope the best for him. I would suggest the whole leadership team quit and the new guy starts again with whomever he wants. It just makes sense to me. Uh, no reality without this advocacy team that's been working on behalf of many persons who claim to have been victimized by Mike and victimized by under leaders under Mike, there's no way this can get worked out unless the advocacy team is working with a reformed IHOP leadership team. And the only way that will happen is with a third party investigation. You've got to have that. No way forward. These two groups, the advocacy team and the IHOP leadership team, cannot meet without third party investigation. Fourthly, no reality without precise speech and claims. The name calling, those people, especially on the advocacy team, insisting on hearsay as facts, where they have good probabilities, but they can't say for sure everything that they've heard is real. That doesn't help. Abusive word speech in describing abuse makes matters worse. And so does minimizing abuse. For example, I erred, I sinned, in referring to Mike's sin and what I posted last as only blurred boundaries, when in fact Mike violated boundaries. He transgressed lives. Forgive me for that. My language soft-pedaled serious sin. No more helpful is inflammatory speech. It cheapens our case. Tone it down if you want to be heard. There's no reality also without ang with rather angry voices who hate IHOP and Mike and the church and Jesus' kingdom come because they're wounded and too immature not to see the forest for the trees. IHOP is beautiful. And it's about Jesus' heart for the whole church. I'm all for that. Sadly, IHOP is now about men made stupid and dangerous by weird, dark stuff. So if your rant is just about how mad and demanding of justice you are, but all you want is for IHOP to be damned, to return to the soil, then you certainly don't have my ear. To me, you're clouding the conversation. You are more smoke than fire. Real joy. This season, this Christmas, hinges on guiding IHOP's controlled burn with wisdom and prayer and fortitude and strength so we can get down to the foundation to reclaim it but also to reform it. IHOP needs significant reforming at core if it's going to be all that God wills for it. I'm an optimist. 
And I would say we can get there. So let's try to get there together. Amen? Merry Christmas.